Hi, this is Victor from Trend Foreign Trading for Beginners. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about the top 10 things that I wish somebody had told me when I first started trading. Coming up next. Hello guys. Okay, today's episode will be different and why I suddenly talk about top 10 things I wish somebody had told me. Well, I was um, doing my chores today and uh, I was very interested in putting all my podcasts on YouTube. So I was looking at how I you know, how I can learn from other people. And uh, there was a YouTube video talking about top 10 mistakes that YouTube, new YouTubers make. And that sort of uh, inspired me to do this podcast the top 10 things I really wish somebody had told me uh, at the start of my journey, trading journey. So uh, I can basically save time and save a lot of money and a lot of headache and emotional, you know, heartache as well. So off the gate, I think unlike other um, people, uh, coaches and uh, educators, I, I, I think the first thing first is really the mindset for anybody who wants to start trading. It's not really about the skills first. First of all, very much like, you know, self-defense. You know, get your mindset right. You know, get get your head screwed right. And uh, um, otherwise, you're going to hurt yourself. It's very much like a gun. You don't know how to control yourself. Um, in what situation you use a gun? I mean, the gun can kill you and hurt you. So the first thing first I would say is think about the process. You know, process before the actual money, you know be process centric and not result centric what happens in most days now i think a lot of people i talk to except the few that i admire and follow um most of them just say basically say yeah get this newsletter get this course read this book come to our webinar and i make you rich uh, most people don't you know got into this you know trap Thinking things are easy, just like buying a lottery ticket, and then suddenly you become a millionaire. Uh, I'm not saying it won't happen, but the type of people that actually happen is like few and far between, probably one in a million, probably one much less than that. And that gives people illusion or false hope. You know, just like any other skills, trading, in my mind, uh, uh, I think it's, it's a teachable skill. It's very much like cooking or self defense. You, you might be good at it. Uh, certain style, certain food type that you like to eat and cook and you're passionate about you, you like those and, and you keep on doing it but uh, you can also learn other styles that you, you might not be inclined to do but you definitely can learn it but to be better to be at the very top you need to put in all the hard work but most of all it's all about process you don't talk about you know how you become number one in uh, self-defense or the best chef you put in loads of hard work and work on the process, work on the process, work on the process until you actually you know, master a dish or master a style or master a particular movement and you move on to do the next dish, next movement and you continue. Do that again and again. You always think about you know how I do this, this way, how I do it that way. It's a process. So share trading is the same thing. You, you don't talk about the money right at the start. You mean like, like a brain surgery. Surgeon, um, when he or she go first go to medical school, do you really think they're thinking about how much money they earn? You know, hundred thousand, twenty thousand uh, after you know twenty years or ten years training. You know, they, they don't. They concentrate on passing the exam, concentrate on getting the result, concentrate on getting the experience before they think about the money, because the money will come by itself. And uh, that there's, I think, um, there's uh, Alexander. Somebody uh, who 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 wrote the book about um, um, live, um, trading for a living. Yeah, he actually said that you know if you follow your process and do your process right, money comes as a half afterthought. It it just comes as a result. You don't have to think about it. Just concentrate on the money, and it's really really um, difficult concept for some people, especially news traders, then think about it because all they think about at this time, especially when you first joined to the, the financial industries, money. I want the money. I mean I, I, I I'm a I'm money con too, you know, at the start I, I was thinking about the money before I, you know, continue the challenge and learn about things. At the end of the day it's like it's process. It's process and it's process. And it's not about the money at the start. 
So I really wish somebody had told me about the, the, the process itself first, and I will definitely save, you know, I'll put a lot more time to do learning, learning the step, learning this process before, you know, risking my time, so to speak. And the other thing which needs to, I mean, after process centric is, you know, the, the emotional control, like what I talk about, the, the, the gun uh, comparison. You know, you know how to pull the trigger. You know how to handle yourself. So you know the throw back. You know power to, to push from from the from from the gunpowder from from the from the bullet from the from the gun itself. You know won't hurt you. You need to stand a certain way. And it's the same 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 thing for trading. You have to have you know stand a certain position. You know, in this case, it's your emotional control. How you put yourself forward. How did how you actually take a trade is very important. Because if you um, always just think of the money, 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 and don't uh, look after the risk control and you know your the state of mind, so to speak, you very soon realize uh, that you just become an addict, you know, a gambler, and you basically throw all your rule books, all your uh, trading system out the window, and just do it for the sake of you know the 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 high, you know the the adrenaline run, you know, in your body. You're not actually there to make money, or to try to make money anyway. So you become a, a gambler rather than a trader or investor, which have a plan, have a way of thinking, a way of doing things. And that, that to me is very important. And, and most of all, is emotional control, risk control, is more important than entry and exit. But nowadays, most people think about yeah. um, buy this course or buy this book, whatever this method, you know, entry exit. That's most important. I forgot, totally forgot about emo, emotional control and how much you need to risk and how to handle yourself when you when every system has its falls and when when the system that you like to you use you know falls on its face and uh, have loads of losses. I mean, I talk about uh, how to handle randomness in my last episode. Uh, you you can have you know a strain of losses. You know, seven, ten. It's not unheard of. Some I'm twelve. And it might be up to twenty. If you can, you as a normal human being, faces twelve nodes or twenty nodes, and continue. And this time, you, when the no is not just somebody just you know tell you no when you ask for something. This time, you actually lose money every trade. Twelve trades, seven trades, or twenty trades straight in a row, and you still continue. Have you got that emotional control to handle that and continue? And that that that's something that you know is food for thought, and I really have wish somebody had told me, and uh, that really will help help me a lot, especially on risk control, and then uh, now emotional control through me meditation, and basically you know have a state uh, with a calmer mind when you actually trade, and don't trade when when my my mind basically running over the place. Say after I have an argument with the, with the family member. Or uh, have an argument with boss, or get fired, that kind of thing. You know, you say make yourself calm first, and then you go back in the market. The market is always be there for you, and so long as you have good risk control and uh, have a good state of mind, well, just follow a system which um, I'm going to talk about next. And then basically, um, with a positive action, you you can make money for stop. Now the next things, uh, the next tips, the next things I really hope somebody told me is quite been talked about a lot but it's very very difficult to do for most people anyway definitely for me and uh, something called cut your losses and let your winners run basically if you lose certain amount of money just get out just say uncle it's the American term to say I have enough and uh, get out and save your the rest of your money for next trade so to speak but most people um, do the totally opposite they let the losers run, hoping and again hope that your your trade will come back, and uh, they are so scared of losing, they actually make a little bit of money or trading, let's say hundred quid or two hundred quid or whatever, and then they cut the winners short, take the money, put it in the bank, because they fear of losing money, and then they get exactly that from the market. The fear of losing money make them lose money because a lot of time the trade actually turn out to be a winner. Quite often it happens, and um, you then kick yourself, kick yourself. And say why did they get out so much so quickly? You know the the 
the the trade could have gone you know five five hundred points up or one thousand points up and you only got three hundred one hundred points something like that and you in basically self sabotage as well that kind of thing so this is uh, going against human nature because most people I mean if you found ten pounds or hundred pounds on the floor somebody dropped it and that you you if you don't pick it up you know next man or couple of people behind you probably just take the money and go on the money won't be there but trading is different because you are trading of random events sometimes if you trade it right you're 100 pounds that you drop on the floor become a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds or more and nobody's picking them up and if you trade it right you can pick it up that's the analogy but most people just worry and scared of losing the money just pick up the money run in trading uh, if you um, most of the time it sounds correct but people forget to outline it you know they talk about the black swan they forgot about the opposite the good white swan which is outliner event that like the 10 bagger 100 bagger whatever you call them or 20 baggers you know the one pound you put down per trade and then suddenly make you 100 pounds a thousand pounds that kind of stuff it doesn't happen often but it does happen and when that happens and you're not on it you're kicking yourself so that's the other thing that uh, I would wish somebody had told me ages ago. Uh, the other thing is, I think this next one really helps me because it turns my, my thinking right away. And uh, I did talk about it in one of my uh, uh, episodes already, which is think like a business owner. Trading shouldn't be just for fun. If you're really serious about it, go trade. Go learn to trade. Take your time to learn. Learning in simulation in a simulated account, or actually trading in the um, in in the actual market itself, but risk very little, and all the time learning and learning and learning and learning and learning and learning, and um, only go in the market if the trade is in your favor or there's high possible probability of actually making you money. Still, you don't risk too much because that can turn into a disaster too. So just like most entrepreneurs, they go in, you know, the the little ideas you know we got we all have and uh, entrepreneurship in our mind we have thousands and thousands of ideas for our lifetime but how many of us actually put uh money where our mouth is well what our dreams are and then basically go and run with it you know create a business out of it there are some but not many because most of us are um conditioned by school i believe and also society to become a worker just a worker bee than the queen or the king himself. So, treat the business like a uh, trading like business owner is a very very good uh, advice. And I really wish somebody told me. The other thing it next lead to is uh, having a system. Most people out there don't have a system itself, and they don't even know if the system is post have a positive edge or not. You know that is over a long period of time. Let's say you know at least hundred trade, try to show you that you can make money. You know. Probably I'm talking about thousands of trade, but minimum you need to see statistics. Why when you write things down and track, you know, we can win and we lose, and then you know, overall that that's some using this one formula, one system, one way of trading, and actually make you money. And if that's what you got, you know, good for you and stick with it. And uh, that is very important to me. Um, where right to start? I I didn't know any about this. Uh, I don't have a system that I trust. I do. Uh, Running around and jumping on different different things we we'll talk about later on as well. Um, jumping system, jumping time frame, jumping um, uh, method, jumping as well. You know, or instrument jumping. Uh, go to forex, go to shares, go to metals, sort of things. All using different uh, strategy. And you know, I forgot about the process. And therefore, I also because I just all jumping all over the place. I never have a you know a system that create a positive edge and lose money as a result and that's really really important that you must either buy a system or create your own system something that you can trust something that you always rely on after perhaps you know your the reliability you know to actually uh, you, you 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 still prefer to use that system you know it's because you have simulated for a long time or at least visually compare the result 
for let's say 10 years chart or, or, or 20 years data and then comfortable with the result actually making you money you can calculate it do you know by but uh, by paper, you know, or write, writing things down and actually convince yourself that it's making money and then follow that through. That is very important to me as a system to have a positive edge. Next, uh, this I learned from my own mistakes uh, is basically writing things down. Keeping a trading journal. Trading journal for me is two parts. One is initially when I first started, it's just basically writing things down to when I buy, when I get out, you know, well, what time I actually do it because some of the time, certain hours affect me as well uh, mentally. And uh, what price I get in, what price I get out, you know, why did I get in, how much I got in, do I buy, sell, trade, whatever method I'm using, those kind of stuff. And then same thing when I sell, I ask me the same same thing, you know, how much I sell, what's my p &L, you know, what the reason I actually sold, sold, sold the uh, share or the forex, whatever. And over time, once you gather 100, 200 of this uh, trade, you know, uh, in, in a journal, you start to see mistakes, loads of mistakes, and also repeatable mistakes that comes in again and again. One thing that really caught me is when I was jumping around all over the place when I first started around, um, I lose money a lot. I have a lot of what you call shark bites to my account, and I blow my account lots and lots of times. Also, I got in, uh, suffered a similar thing, what you call piranhas bites. Small little bite, little nibbles, but hundreds of them, and just you know, basically affect you. I, I, I can't go below as well because of that. So once I write things down, I started to see patterns, patterns of something that I done well, making money, and patterns that I done not so well and losing lots of money, and why I blow that count. And I always found it's just a couple of stupid shark bite, large losses that I was. First of all, not following my plan. I was too greedy. I didn't think I have a risk control and uh, didn't follow my stop loss, etc. And just let the things run in the market, just bang right in front of your eyes, kill you, shoot your head off and speed you out and you got nothing left. And it happens so many times. And the trading journal really helps me to, to find that. Secondly, uh, only last two, three years, I started writing down as well, is the reason why you go into the trade or exit the trade. You know, that emotional reason why you go in, what you feel, how do you feel, not just follow the system, but what you feel at the time, what the general market is like. Is that, you know, does that affect you? Anything that stick to you? And uh, do you want to write down that you feel is irrelevant? And then you read back six months later or three months later, it's, oh, those things what you know what I worry about actually come true or some things you know sometimes doesn't you know the BS that kind of stuff and you start to learn about it about it about how your brain work how you like or dislike certain things and that also helps you a lot you know that's more like an emotional checkpoint to find out in certain situation you're going to make money in certain situation uh, you don't make money and you find out the situation you don't make money you control your risk more or not to trade those situation, that kind of thing, which really helps. So having a journal is a must for any traders. Next is, um, I read this from somebody else from Asia, basically try to, you know, uh, trade account um, like a casino. Now, to think of this way, you know, why casino having, like, for example, Las Vegas, put up so many shows, so many wonderful size shows and say, come here and, you know, play, you know, and uh, you know we give you extra money or uh, exclusive show, talk show, whatever, and then a boxing show, whatever, and uh, get you involved or just go to Las Vegas. The whole reason is they want you to trade. They want you to actually put in, you know, uh, uh, go in the casino and, and put put in a bet. And casinos, I'm not sure you know or not, just very much like lottery. Each of the games in casino has a particular mathematical model, a uh, edge that is towards the house. So if people play it millions, millions of times, the house will end up winning. Of course, uh, every so often they have to pay out quite a large amount of money, but over thousands, tens of thousands, millions of trade, you know, bets, they always come on top. I mean, someone have to pay for this, you know, pay for the whole hotel, pay for the, the food, pay for the show. And who's paying for it? The people making the bet. And why does casino so much money, make so much money? Because they have a mathematical model in the sort of games that they actually presented, that's actually allowed on, on the premises, actually make money 
over the long term, providing there's loads of people go there. One thing that really strikes me is this, you know, um, um, probably about 10 years or so ago, so 15 years or something, 2003, or around 2000, something like that, Chinese started allowing the citizens to go to Macau and Hong Kong, I think around 2003. And Sands actually went in to uh, Macau to open a new shop. I think it was on BBC News, and it cost about 130 million US dollars uh, with you know casinos, with hotels, and all sorts of stuff. And BBC actually got some CCTV footage, you know, that Sands um, Casino actually opened. And the day itself that was open, it's very much like Black Friday America. All this Chinese was pushing against the glass door, trying to get in. And once they get in, people just rush in. Some people just fall off, fall down, just like people buying buying stuff on, on uh, Black Friday sales and go straight in to, to do betting, you know, because in China, they're not allowed to do that. And one thing that what really caught my my, my eyes was the BBC uh, news at the time actually said, "Oh, Sansa makes so much money, and within twelve, within ten months, not even twelve months, not even the first year, within ten months they recruit hundred and thirty million US dollars, all the money they spend, because there's so many Chinese going to the casinos, the casinos, all the time, for ten months, and they only made money back." That tells me a lot, like, you know, that's why I mean so many people want to go into gambling business. But also tells you that providing there's enough volume, the casino make money. So you think of it like a trading. If you have a system that is having a positive edge, just like the casino, providing you stay alive and play enough trades, okay, taking enough trades, play the, uh, play the large number game, and still survive, and you will. Well, providing you, you watch out your risk management, you will make loads of money. The more you play, the more money you make. But yeah, there will be losses. But because uh, the the game of large number, basically, you will end up winner, providing you have a positive edge. So if you think like yourself trading like a casino, providing your, you, this positive edge is really important as far as I'm concerned. And once you have that, all you need to make sure is risk control, make sure you stay in the games, you still have money to take the next trade, and inevitably, just like everything else, you know, bad things fall onto us, so it's good things fall onto us. The problem with trading, is, especially with new traders, we spend so much money up front and hoping and against hope, oh, we will make it loads of money and risk too much, you know, more than 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%. And the inevitable string of losses happens and you got ganked out of the, of the trade. And then the next trade, when you've got no money, suddenly become a 10 bag or 20 bag or 50 bag or whatever, and make you lots of money, and you're thumbing yourself, oh, I really wish I got some money to trade. All because you did not understand the probabilities, the positive edge, and you risk too much. You don't have your emotional control, you don't have money management control, your greed got into your head. You don't like to do hard work. You don't write things down. Somebody tell you to do something or just write, um, you know, buy something because of a tip. Is uh, and then you lost everything. So watch out and think like you know, it's well, well worth of thought. And I uh, probably will do another episode about that. Next thing I talked about a bit earlier is about um, is system jumping. Don't do system jumping. If you do. Charting, just stay with charting. You just feel you just ask your cup of tea, just stay there. If trend following is your cup of tea, go trend following. If other methods your cup of tea, do it. But don't go from one system and then to another system, and another system, one and another. Go to one time frame and try to find a day yourself. No, every system, hear this, every trading system has its positive edge as well as negative edge. You have its good point and bad point. There's no such system that have all good pawns and no bad pawns. The only thing that could ever happen if you think of it, if uh, yeah, everything's always positive, is made of, you know. Ponzi scheme. Always 1% per year. Or 1% per month. Hmm. I don't get what happened. Those pension funds, a lot of uh, uh, fund managers, hedge fund managers, Thought themselves, you know, so 
fantastic. You know, because of greed, they fall for the Madoff scheme and lost everything. So, be careful. And trust your once you've got a system, stay with it. And don't jump about. Because each system, the other as well, each system has its own positive edge. You jump about. How do you know your system, your whatever you method you're trading is actually making you money? One way around this is like, you know, okay, you have, well, I do that as well. I have multiple accounts. Each account have different system. I've got about like five systems. I've got five different accounts, just run them. And each account is like a little manager. I have this method of doing things, of uh, scanning the, the market and basically go, uh, go and um, uh, trade the market. And I just keep all the accounts separate. And then at the end of the day, I just look at, okay, which one's making you more money, which one's not, make, not making as much money. And this is the one that's not making you much money over, you know, five years, ten years for you. Not, not looking at, you know, a couple of months, that kind of stuff. Okay, that's one alternative. Next things, um, this one uh, hurts me a lot when I was starting. Listening to others. Listening to newsletters. Listening to newspaper or TV shows, and uh, or especially your good friend who have done trading before and tell you what to do and sh- somehow convince you, oh, they know the fundamentals, they know the ins and outs. Follow them, you won't lose. You won't lose at all. And Bob your uncle, you definitely lose because you don't have a plan, you don't have uh, emotional control, you don't have risk control. Uh, your friend don't know how much you can afford to lose, how much you can afford to risk every trade, and then sooner or later you definitely lose a lot of money. And besides, your friend give you a good tip. What happened next? Well, let's say if he gone to uh, you know have a car accident, God bless him, and uh, got hit in a, by a car and have to stay in hospital for a while. And what? Where where are you gonna get your tips? Where are you where are you gonna get your next trading signals? And uh, that's and also another point that uh, Jesse Livermore will talk about in his book, uh, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. Uh, there was a guy I think the what they call the Cotton King, who was well known in the time nineteen twenties when Jesse Livermore was trading, and Jesse Livermore got convinced by this Cotton King to, to bet, you know, I think it's two million US dollar at the time, whatever it is, on cotton, because the guy told Jesse a story, a process, whatever it is, and got Jesse convinced. And he put his money in and boom, lost everything. Because the market did not agree with this Cotton King. No more, even though the Cotton King knows the ins and outs about cotton, about uh, the options, the futures, how the operators work, how the producers work, how the sellers work, you know, how the agriculture system works, everything. Still lose lots of money. And from day on, Jesse is bound not to listen to anybody else. And that's it. I think that is a very good lesson for everybody to learn about. Don't listen. Like Jim Cramer. Tell you don't buy this, don't buy that. And all this, you know, flashy show. But in a day, he doesn't know how much, what is your risk tolerance, how much you have, how when is your uncle born, and, and what what age are you, what's your situation? You know, so if you got a system, trust your system. So long as your system, you have a positive edge, and you verify through simulation and also active trading, and stick with it. Don't jump around. Stick with it. Don't need once you got a trading system that works for you. You don't even listen to news. Forget about the feds. Forget about what Donald Trump is tweeting. Forget about what Chinese is doing about the tariffs. You don't need them. All you need is trust your system. What your system said. Providing a positive edge. Just follow it through, and you'll make money. Full stop. I guarantee you. And the other thing, the last things, uh, I think a lot of new traders do it. Is what you call. Uh, half inching down you know try to catch a falling knife let's say you know I, I bought into it before a couple of times one of them I still remember vividly is what you call a uh, cable company in UK called Telewest uh, it's like you know at the time I was trading at five six U- U- pounds and it gone down to into pennies and I thought oh penny stock I can buy a lot more now and I even convinced my friend to buy it and uh, it gone into 50p's and then I bought it around 30 it's gone boom shoot down to single digit 
pennies, really pennies. <laughs> my friend didn't blame me, but I really blame myself. And I thought, oh, I can average it down, let the price go down, I finish some more down, the more. The price gone down for a reason. And I thought, oh, the fundamental is good, it's cable company, it's going quadruple play, it's going to have TV, go have internet. Gonna have you know Sky Sports News, whatever, and also her going to the mobile phone. Wow, quadruple play, fantastic! And what happened? The share price just came on going down and got gobbled up by Virgin Media. So that was my lesson, a big lesson. Don't average things down. When the price falling, it's for a reason. You don't actually make money. Do the reverse. When the price is going up, you buy some more. When the price price is going down, you sell some more. You can short it to options or or uh, CFDs, the contract for difference or spread betting. Sell and sell lower. You buy, you buy higher. That's the actual rule better than using averaging down. So I hope these ten things um, actually help you. And I really wish that you know, somebody have told or told me this before. It's more than ten, you know. Over time, I learned quite a lot about different things, and I really wish somebody to to uh, tell me all this stuff before I start. So save you lo- save me lots of money and time and uh, headaches. But I mean, these ten things I talk about today is some of the most important ones, and it's likely I'm going to talk about a bit more in different episodes. So, uh, if you, um, whatever you like this, um, uh, this type of um, um, talk uh, podcast, then please subscribe to my podcast channel. And uh, at the moment, I'm on uh, on Anchor and a lot of other uh, iTunes and stuff. But I also put my uh, my podcast in the moment onto my uh, my uh, YouTube channel, so which is everything is on the on the description there. And also, if you would like to. Um, uh, have a chit chat with me, just to basically uh, a fifteen minutes chit chat of you know where you are or how we like to start trading or learn about trading. And if I, you think I can help you or point you right in the right direction, just you know give me a buzz, sign up, and uh, I will just give you a, a Zoom call, no obligation. Just want a quick chit chat, fifteen twenty minutes chat, and just talk to you more in depth what you want, what you're facing, what your problems are, and see how if I can help you or at least point you in the right direction. So. Thank you very much for listening and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.